The Claiming of Sleeping Beauty by A. N. Rocalor. Chapter One. The prince had all his young life known the story of Sleeping Beauty, but he did not believe it until he was inside the very castle that housed her. In the topmost bedchamber he found her. Her flaxen hair lay long and straight over her bed, and her dress in loose folds revealed the limbs of a young woman of fifteen, though a hundred ages older. Approaching her, he gasped. Her face was perfect to him. He drew out his sword and gently cut away at her dress till she was completely naked. He put his sword to one side and removed his heavy armor. He mounted her, thrust his sex into her, and upon feeling his seed explode within her, her blue eyes opened. Beauty, he whispered, I've awakened you. For a hundred years you've slept and so have all those who loved you. Listen, you'll hear this castle come alive as no one before you has heard it. Already a shriek had come from the passage outside. A serving girl was standing there with her hands to her lips. The prince went to the door to speak to her. And go to your master, the king. Tell him the prince has come who is foretold to remove the curse in this house. I'll tell him I shall now be closeted with his daughter. He shut the door, bolting it, and turned to look back at Beauty, who lay covering herself with her little hands. I'm your prince. And that is how you will address me, and that is why you will obey me. He parted her legs again. He saw the blood of her innocence on the cloth, and this made him laugh softly to himself as again he gently entered her. Answer me properly, my prince, she said. Aha! Uh-huh. That is lovely. He opened the door to tell the servant she would have his supper now, and that he would receive the king immediately. Beauty, he ordered, to dine with him, and to wear no clothing. The banquet table was laid. Presently, the king stood in the doorway to the hall, dressed in his heavy ceremonial robes. Your kingdom has been neglected for a hundred years, said the prince with a wine goblet. Well, I am in your debt, prince, said the king. But will you tell me your name, the name of your family? My mother, Queen Eleanor, lives on the other side of the forest. In your time, it was my great-grandfather's kingdom. King Heinrich, your powerful ally? The prince saw the king's immediate surprise and understood it. You are the son of a powerful monarch. I will take beauty to serve. She is mine now. Well, as you wish, I am in your debt. You have your life and your kingdom now, and I have your daughter. I will spend the night here and tomorrow set out to make her my princess across the mountains. You may go, your highness. The king and all his servants left. The prince had placed some food on his plate and snapped his fingers for beauty to come to him. He could see her shame, but he brushed her hand away from her sex. Never cover yourself. Yes, my prince, but it's so difficult. Now don't be frightened. I could be old and ugly. Ah, uh, but then I could feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'm going to punish you for that. Are you hungry, beautiful one? She was afraid to answer. Merely say, only if it pleases you, my prince. And I shall know the answer is yes. Or, not unless it should please you, my prince. And I shall know the answer is no. Do you understand me? Yes, my prince. I'm hungry only if it pleases you. Very good, very good. Were you terribly spoilt before and given everything that you wished? Yes, my prince. I think, uh, perhaps... But were you willful? No, my prince. I, I don't think I was that. I tried to be a joy to my parents. And you'll be a joy to me, my dear. New sheets and coverlets had been laid on the bed. There were fresh down pillows and roses in a vase nearby, and several candelabra. Now, we must get to bed, as we have a long journey before us tomorrow, and I still have to punish you for your earlier impertinence. He would sleep in his clothes, as he did most nights. Seating himself on the side of the bed, he snuffed a few candles and brought Beauty's naked body down over his lap, his right hand moving languidly over her rounded buttocks, forcing them ever so slightly apart. With his right hand, he did spank her buttocks hard, and she cried loudly, and he spanked her hard again, and he felt her writhing against him, the heat and moisture of her sex against his leg, and again he spanked her. Just reading my stories. Uh... 
He lifted her up so that she was standing in front of him. I don't think you were so very spoilt. I find you very obedient and eager to please. And this makes me very happy. Now clasp your hands behind your neck, under your hair. That's it. Very good. So, do you find me handsome? Here's my prince. He reached out, <clears throat> massaged her right breast lightly, and then stroked her down the underarms, feeling the little curvature of the muscle there beneath the tiny wisp of golden hair. And then he stroked the full, moist hair between her legs so that she sighed and trembled. You won't find me such a hard master, he said. Only thorough. She was in complete awe of him. He lifted her up onto the bed and laid her down. With his finger and thumb, he felt those tender little lips. With his right fingers, he found that tiny nodule of flesh between her tender nether lips, and he worked it back and forth, feeling the hot fluid between her legs, the real fluid which had not come before. Now he parted his clothing and took out his hard, eager sex, and as he drove his organ into her, he felt her shudder violently with unwilling pleasure. Soon she lay still, moist, pink. <sighs> This has been so hard for you, and it is only the beginning. The day will come when you can see nothing but me, as if I were the sun and the moon. When I mean all to you, who drink the air you breathe, then you will be truly mine. And these first lessons, and pleasures, will seem like nothing. Now, kiss me. And I mean really, kiss me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>